many people use filters every day without knowing how they work. They allow you to do amazing things like change the appearance of images, remove unwanted signal components, all the way to extracting features in computer vision for AI applications, and much, much more. Filters are often depicted as a magical black box, but we will explore what makes them work both intuitively and mathematically. At the end of this video series, you will see how amazing signal processing can be and appreciate how it is a fundamental skill for modern engineering. Let's start with some intuition about the kind of things filters can do. Many of you may be familiar with the use of Fourier transforms and Fourier series, and how they can be used to draw interesting waveforms. We will use the concept of drawing any shape as an infinite series of sinusoids, with frequencies ranging from zero, or DC, to theoretical infinite frequencies. Consider this square wave, which is drawn with 10 harmonics. The sinusoid causes a magnitude and a rotation, shown by the arrows. When drawn end-to-end, -end, the height position of the resultant sum is used as the y-coordinate. As we have 10 harmonics, there are 10 arrows used here. We can use this to visually explain the effect of a commonly used filter, the low-pass filter. The aim of this is to only allow low frequencies to pass and block higher frequencies. Perhaps these higher frequencies cause a terrible screeching sound in audio or corrupt data far too much. We can consider an arbitrary black box and set the filter to block out the last seven harmonics. Harmonics have a more mathematical definition. But for now, consider each harmonic to be at a higher frequency than the last. When passed through the low-pass filter, you can see the effect as all the higher frequency fluctuations disappear and we are left with a different waveform made only of low frequencies. This is observed by the spacing between each wavefront within the signal. The question is, how does this actually work? This will be explored further into this video and the following series on filters and signal processing. To delve into this, consider the rotating vectors once more. The last seven harmonics have been highlighted in red. Notice that this traces out the waveform before the low-pass filter. Then, when we get rid of these components, the lower-order waveform is drawn out, but this time without the extra arrows representing harmonics. We started with 10, and now there are only 3 arrows left. So, the answer is that we need a way of making the magnitude of these harmonics so small that they have no effect. A useful tool for this is the magnitude response, which is a frequently used tool when we delve into the mathematical background in a later video. You can see that this wave is made of signals at a fixed magnitude, the Fourier coefficients, and at fixed frequencies. Then, you can see that if we want to filter out the red signals, the corner frequency of the filter must be appropriately set, according to the green line. Reality may not allow such a perfect cutoff but there are many design choices that affect how filters work. This has many useful applications in engineering, which we will explore throughout this series. This will include how to implement this in both code and a physical circuit. Subscribe to get notified when the next video is released and to support this channel.